So if we could uh, delve into this question of science and technology mm -hmm. and music, um, in particular live performance of classical music, what do you think has been the influence of a very science and technology infused society on classical music? Because I've read wonderful quotes from you about how classical music doesn't use microphones, doesn't necessarily need lighting, mm -hmm. um, isn't being kind of photoshopped, right. to use the word generally, mm -hmm. by any form of technology. Do you think science and technology is, is important for music today, or do you think that um, the real focus of music still needs to be looking at the composer's intention and staying true to the instruments and the, and the legacy? I think 100% we should be focused on the music itself. The music itself, the, the instrument itself, the composer, I think is plenty is plenty. It can be so enriching and so fulfilling just by itself. And you don't need the microphones. You don't need the extra lighting. You don't need the laser show. And especially when it comes to, you know, to, to all this amazing technology that you have in it. And, you know, sometimes you see it now, even in the classical world, where they not only try to mic you, but they have all these new halls that are acoustically adaptable meaning that they can raise the panels, they can lower the panels, they can open the curtains, they can close So like, they can make you something that you're not, put simply. Exactly, and I always, when they, when they and, I, and I realize that it's a wonderful option to have because with some halls, they're multi-purpose. You know, they are sometimes used for recitals, which means it's, there is a pianist and a violinist, that's it. A chamber orchestra, small chamber orchestra, or a full, you know, full-on orchestra with 100 plus musicians on stage. So I guess it would be nice to have that option. But my favorite halls in the world, you know, the Vienna Music Verein, the Amsterdam Concertgebouw, you know, the Berlin Philharmonia. I mean, these, they're halls. You don't mess with them. You don't play with them. You, know, you go, you play in the hall, and if you need to tweak your own playing to make it you know, sound great in that hall, then you tweak your playing. But you don't start messing with the hall. Then it becomes the responsibility of the musician and not an acoustic engineer. And, and you just, you don't want to start playing that game because then it's, it's like plastic surgery. I sort of feel that it's like plastic surgery when you start fixing the boobs or the nose or the ears or, and then everything just all of a sudden doesn't look right because you're fixing one thing at a time. And sometimes you just need to just like take a step back and say, you know what, it's okay the way it is. That's just a leave fantastic it analogy. <laughs> Because it's, it's true that you, you wouldn't necessarily notice if, for example, adapting the volume might yeah. shift the tone or exactly. might create an echo of some sort. Or, exactly. Um, exactly. That's really, really interesting.